Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's now time for another monthly favourites video, this time looking back at the month of November, how this year has been flying by. Um, there are no major events to mention this month, there's no ab sale or anything like that, so it was just a month where I could just enjoy myself and relax, which was lovely. So I went to the theatre a few times and to some museums and did other bits and pieces, so yeah, I'm just going to crack on with it and I hope you enjoy hearing about my latest escapades. And the first thing I will talk about are the theatre trips I went on. I went to the theatre three times during the month, which is unprecedented for me, but I'm very glad I did because I love going to the theatre, so having so many opportunities to go was great. And the first show I saw was something that was, again, very new to me. It was a ballet this time. I'd not really been sure before if I wanted to see a ballet because it is so visual and I just didn't know if it would be for me, really. But my friend Claire found an audio-described ballet that was a light-hearted comedy with a gentle love story in it. And it sounded all right. I thought I'd give it a go because, you know, it wasn't anything too heavy or depressing or dry, anything like that. So it just sounded really nice and easy to get into. And it was at the Sadler's Wells Theatre and it was called The Wayward Daughter. It's got a French name as well, but I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Um, but the English name is The Wayward Daughter. And yeah, it's just basically a love story. And it's got lots of silly things in there as well, though. So you've got like dancing chickens and things like that in it as well. It's not too surreal it's not too silly but you've just got little touches like that that just add the humor to it throughout and yeah it's just really really sweet story-wise the touch tour was probably the best i've ever been on at a theater though because that lasted about two hours and was very very comprehensive we got to have a tour of the stage first and got to see all the different pieces of the set and various props and things like that which was lovely then we went to a rehearsal studio and saw lots of the different costumes which was lovely because they had lots of lovely beautiful outfits there and then we had a Q&A with the conductor of the music, which was brilliant. Um, it was really interesting to talk to him about, you know, what it's like to conduct the orchestra for a ballet in comparison to other things. So, yeah, it was, that was really, really good. Like I say, it was the best touch tour I've ever been on because it was so comprehensive. And the audio description was really, really useful. I mean, for something like that, it is all visual. It was vital to have that. Um, and for me, it worked all right. For others, it didn't. And I think it's because they were using an infrared system, which often gets blocked by either other people or parts of the building or whatever, as opposed to a radio transmission system which doesn't get affected by all those kind of barriers. So for me, I was all right because I'm quite tall, so I think I kind of had a bit of an advantage. But for others, they were kind of having their signal blocked for whatever reason. Fair play to the lady who was looking after us, who came to check up on us in both intervals. She did her very, very best to help them and really try and get things working with the technical team, but they just couldn't manage it. So hopefully they can improve on that because it has worked fine in that theatre before. I don't know that personally, but I know it from the experience of those who I was with who have been there before. So yeah, hopefully they can work on that and improve that. But for me, the experience was great. The play was really lovely. The music was wonderful. The dancing was amazing. It was lovely, bright, colourful sets and stuff like that. And the other cool thing about the show is that there was a live pony in there as well. A live Shetland pony called Peregrine, who pulls a cart on and off the stage a few times. And he was outside the theatre with his handler before and after the show for the crowd to meet him. So we got to say hello both before and after the performance. And yeah, he was just really lovely, you know, really tame. He wasn't at all bothered by people going up to talk to him. And, you know, he's a bit of a star, really. I found an article about him online and he's, he's really popular. And yeah, he's just lovely. It was lovely to meet him. He's really, really cute. So overall, it was a, it was a very good experience. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So, you know, I would go to more lighthearted things like that. I don't think I'd go to more heavier kind of dramatic or tragic type stories. Same goes for the Shakespeare play as well I saw the previous month. But anything nice and easy like that is nice. You can find out much more detail about what it was like for me to go to the ballet and also to a Shakespeare play last month in my blog post called Ballet and the Bard. I just put both together in there because they were both new experiences for me so it's a good chance to talk about them both together. So go and check that out for photos and lots of details and things like that. And then the second play I saw was the comedy about a bank robbery, which is done by a group called Mischief Theatre. And they're also known for the play that goes wrong. That was their first production. And Peter Pan goes wrong. They've also done A Christmas Carol goes wrong on the TV. And in those examples, the play that goes wrong, Peter Pan and Christmas Carol, it's about a fictional theatre group who are putting on a play, but it goes really badly for them and it just goes wrong and everything just gets worse and worse throughout the show. It becomes very farcical, very slapstick. The comedy about a bank robbery is kind of like a proper play, but the characters in it are in very farcical situations. And again, it's very slapstick and there's lots of silly wordplay and other great humour in there. So it's really funny throughout. It's a really, really good story and I really enjoyed it. And the set pieces there are very clever. There's some very clever special effects as you go through. For instance, there's a scene where they're crawling through the ventilation shaft and you actually get an overhead shot of the office on the back of the stage with the actors kind of 
angled as such so you think you're looking down on the floor of the office even though you're sitting normally and there's various humorous situations that result from that because of the people being on wires and stuff it, it makes sense when you see it but it's really really good and the whole show is just really really funny and we had a touch tour for that as well I went to that with my mum this time and yeah that, again that was really really good we got to see lots of the props and to go up on the stage and to meet the actors and the props are really fun to look at because it's a comedy and because you know it's just all slapstick and stuff there's lots of oversized props and things that just help to make it all the more silly really like there's various sizes of moustache for instance from a normal size one to one that's really huge covering like four seats in width it makes sense when you see it when it gets used i'm not going to spoil why a huge moustache gets used but it is there and there's a huge piggy bank and there's various nice costumes there's a nice costume that the uh, prince wears in fact and it was really cool to meet the actors as well and they told us a bit about their characters and showed us the accents that they have to put on especially one guy who plays all the other characters who aren't the lead so he has to play like over 10 characters and has to know all their different accents as well as their lines and stuff and he's an understudy for one of the main characters as well in case they can't perform so yeah he had a lot to do but yeah, they all enjoy themselves. You can tell they enjoy being in the play. It's really, really good. And I want to go and see the play that goes wrong because I haven't seen that yet because that is their original production. But the comedy about a bank robbery is at the Criterion Theatre in Piccadilly and it's really good. I highly recommend it if you like a bit of comedy. And then the final play I saw during the month was a drama called A Pupil, which was being put on at the Park Theatre, which is a relatively new theatre compared to many of the old West End ones. This is only come about in the very last few years. But it's a lovely place. Accessibility wise, it's great for me because the signage in there is brilliant. It's really, really big and very clear contrast. You've got like big white symbols on the doors for the toilets against a black background. So it's really easy to see the toilet doors, which was fantastic. And it was easy to find the way to the auditorium we needed to get to. So yeah, I really found that easy to get around and the staff there were lovely. We didn't have a touch tour and audio description for this play. We could have had it, but we weren't available on that particular date, so we just picked a different date instead. And it was fine, because as it happens, this particular show is what's called In the Round, which means the audience sit around the stage. It's a very small auditorium, so it's very intimate, you're very close to the action. So it was absolutely fine, we could see what we needed to with our telescopes, or just see what was going on with our naked eye, because it was very minimalist, the set anyway, so it's fine. And the play is basically about a violinist who is just feeling kind of very down about the world and her life, and she's persuaded to take on this young apparently bratty and rude pupil um, to try and train her it's about the relationship between them and the relationship between a couple of other people as well in this violinist's life and yeah it's really interesting you know it's not too depressing there is humor in there as well which is quite a nice play but you know the ending is open-ended it does make you think it does make you think about how it could have progressed from there which is good it's nice to have plays that make you think now and again and there is music in the play as well because the young violinist the pupil does play the violin during the show and she's very very good you know the actress who plays her is a very accomplished performer clearly so it was lovely to hear that live and the music is composed by Colin Sell who a lot of people will know from I'm sorry I haven't a clue he plays the piano on that Radio 4 comedy show he's composed the music for this show and on the date we went after the performance, there was a Q&A with him and other members of the production team, like the writer and other people like that. So it was really interesting to kind of hear the background of the show and how it came about and their thoughts on it and their perspectives. So it was a really nice night. The play was great and the staff at the theatre were lovely as well. And also, it has to be said, it was nice and easy for me to book the tickets as well because this is perhaps the only time where I've been able to book disabled concession tickets online. You know, Normally, I have to ring up a theatre's access line in order to book disabled tickets but here, I was able to register an account online and then contact the access team who updated my account so that whenever I book tickets, like if I book two tickets, one of those tickets automatically becomes a free carer ticket at the end of the checkout process. So that was absolutely great. It just made the whole thing nice and easy. I could book my tickets when I was ready. And the other great thing was that I was going with my friend Claire and we thought we'd take up their pizza and a drink offer, which means you can have a pizza and a drink at their bar beforehand. I bought the tickets for that. And the same applied. One of those tickets became free. So we got, you know, two pizzas and two drinks for just 12 quid, which is a bargain. So, yeah, it's just really, really good, that place. They've really made an effort with accessibility to try and make things as easy as possible, you know, as far as I can tell from that one visit. So, yeah, I was really impressed with that. The Park Theatre's a lovely place. And then in terms of other types of shows, I also went to a couple of stand-up gigs as well, because I like my comedy, as you know. So the first thing I went to was the Angel Comedy Club at the Bill Murray Bar. And I went to this with the Aquabats group, which is another visually impaired group that I'm a member of. So we went there for one of their free comedy nights, which basically means that you have one comedian acting as the compare. It's a bit like Live at the Apollo on TV, if you like. You have one comedian acting as the compare, and they do some material themselves and interact with the audience. And then they introduce 
other comedian to do you know 10 minutes each so here we had one guy acting as the host and then five comedians that he introduced and it was a really nice night it was really good fun you know by its nature some comedians are better than others and some of their material works better than others but they all got laughs out of us you know it wasn't one of those nights where it was kind of painful to watch or anything like that it was all really good so yeah i enjoyed that it was a nice night out with some mates to watch some comedy and then the other thing i went to was something called history show off at the library in Southwark Cathedral which is a very lovely location and this was put on by a group called Science Show Off and basically it's a similar sort of thing in that you have someone hosting and they introduce various different acts but these acts are like historians and archaeologists and scientists people like that so what you get is a little presentation about a topic that they've been investigating and learning about but it's all done in a very fun style with lots of comedy so it covered all sorts of topics like women's swimwear and Chinese witchcraft and Welsh castles and US presidents and all sorts of different bits and pieces it was very random but very interesting as well and very good fun the act that I liked the most was the only one that I knew in fact and that was Dan Schreiber now, I like the show QI on TV. You know, it's a comedy panel show, again, with lots of facts that you get to learn on there. And the researchers on that show do their own podcast called No Such Thing as a Fish. Every week, basically, they present the facts that they found during the week and have a good laugh about them and a good chat about them. And Dan Schreiber leads that podcast. So he came along and did two spots, in fact, because I think he was standing in for somebody else as well as doing his own slot. So he was able to spread his material out over these two slots. And he presented his top 10 facts to us, which were really fun and interesting. For instance, you know, Winston Churchill used to throw his false teeth across the room when he got angry. And he had a special technician deliberately employed to keep his teeth in good shape, you know, replace his dentures when they broke like that, give him a spare set, all this kind of stuff. And then when the Second World War started, Winston Churchill made sure that this technician wasn't called up because he needed him there to kind of look after his dentures. So he was able to talk because obviously he had to communicate a lot with the public and with governments and with, you know, the army and all sorts of other people. So that was quite interesting. Just to, it's quite fun just to imagine Winston Churchill just chucking his dentures across the room when he gets a bit mad. So yeah, lots of random facts like that. It was a really, really interesting night. And I know science show off do various different shows in various different places. So there'll be a group to keep an eye on, definitely. So it was a really good night. And then moving on to museums, I went to a couple of different museums during the month. The big visit was Madame Tussauds, which I'd never been to before, but I went there with East London Vision, and this was actually a visit to assess their accessibility, but it was also a day out as well in that respect. So we each had a volunteer with us to help us round and, you know, help us figure out who was who. And it's a really interesting museum. It's great. You know, the waxworks are so lifelike and realistic. It's amazing. And you can actually get right up close to them and touch them and have photos with them. It's wonderful. So I got photos with Lots of different wax works like Emma Watson and Benedict Cumberbatch and Freddie Mercury, who I saw at the Queen shop a few weeks ago. You know, they had his wax work there temporarily, but I wasn't able to pose with him and get a photo then. So I'm glad I did this time. And there was the Beatles and there was the royal family we posed with on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. And then there were other characters like, you know, King Kong and there was the Hulk from the Marvel films and R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars and various different things. So I got lots of lovely photos that day. So it was really good fun. And they have other special attractions there, like a taxi ride that takes you through the history of London. And there's a 4D movie of some Marvel superheroes kind of saving the day. So you, as well as getting like 3D glasses, which sort of work for me to a limited extent you also get like rumbling seats and sprays of water and all this kind of stuff to kind of really bring it to life so that was quite good fun so yeah it's a really nice museum i'm glad i finally got to go in terms of accessibility yes they do need to work on it finding a way through a museum can be a bit tricky especially if you're looking for something specific like the toilets which are quite well hidden away there's a lot of kind of going up and downstairs and it's quite a winding route through all the different galleries so it's not the easiest place to find your way around necessarily and the thing we really struggled with was finding the signs that told you who all the different waxworks were obviously the ones that i could recognize i didn't need to ask about them but the ones i wasn't quite sure of you know perhaps i recognized the face but couldn't place the name or whatever it was really hard to find the plaques on the wall that said who they were and even for my sighted volunteer who had normal sight he struggled as well you know because they made them as unobtrusive as possible they kind of made them blend into the walls by having the same colors as the walls and the text is kind of small and poorly contrasted and the plaques aren't even next to the artwork sometimes. They're kind of a little further along the wall, just around the corner or something, kind of representing a whole group of waxworks. So it wasn't always easy to find them and to read them. So that's something they could work on. You know, having large print guides could be great. Having an audio guide could be great. 
maybe having some kind of audio guide that triggers automatically when you get near to different artworks, or having a number you can type in or something. I don't know. It just seems like there are ways of doing things better, but they were perfectly happy for us to do this study. They knew we were doing it. We weren't mystery shoppers or anything. So hopefully they'll take our various bits of feedback on board and they'll improve accessibility for the visually impaired and other disabled people as well, hopefully. So it's a really interesting day and really, really good fun. I really enjoyed that. And then the other museum I went to see wasn't in London at all, actually. This was in Portsmouth because I went down there to stay with some friends for a few days. And we went to the Mary Rose Museum in their dockyards area. You know, they've got a few different things there, like HMS Victory as well, and other ships that you can go and explore. So we went to the Mary Rose Museum, and it's really, really interesting. Again, I didn't really know much about it, you know, other than the very, very basics. So to find out about it and to see kind of the various items they rescued from it, and to see the actual ship itself, which is kind of in the centre of the museum, and you see it from different levels as you go to and from the different galleries at each end of the building. It was really fascinating to see that history and to learn about it. They've obviously done a lot of research and been able to figure out so much about life on the ship and they've even been able to reconstruct what people looked like from their skeletons which is incredible so yeah it was really really interesting uh, they got large print guides as well which is great and that's very very helpful the lighting in there is a bit dark um, because it has to be to preserve the different items and the ship and things like that so yeah it's a little bit tricky if you're not great in low light but even though i wasn't able to see everything clearly because of that i was still taking photos of things and i was able to look at a lot of those photos later and see things better than i did at the time and i was still able to see enough at the time anyway to enjoy it and there were things you could handle and touch at one point as well, which was really cool. And there's some little bits of costumes you can try on as well at one point. So, yeah, it was a really fun day out. We really enjoyed ourselves. And, you know, I definitely recommend it if you're interested in that kind of thing. And I'd like to explore the other museums and attractions that are in that area because they've got quite a bit down there. So, you know, at some point in the future, as I keep visiting Portsmouth, as I will do to see my friends there, it'd be nice to see more of that as time goes on. And then in terms of entertainment, I've been enjoying much the same shows as I mentioned last month, to be honest. Doctor Who is still going and I'm still enjoying it. And in fact, this past weekend, they had an actress who is blind playing a blind character, which is great. You know, it sounds like an obvious thing, but often you don't get disabled people playing disabled characters. So it's nice to actually see it happening. You know, someone who actually understands what it's like. You know, there's no reason why they can't act. And this lady clearly can. She was very, very good. So I'm very, very glad they did that. And I've also been watching The Flash as well, which is another sci-fi show. And I've been watching various comedies like The Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon and The Last Leg and Would I Lie to You and stuff like that. So it's all been really, really good fun. The one new series I have been watching is Michael McIntyre's Big Show, which is another comedy show. It's an entertainment show on a Saturday night where he just you know plays lots of surprises on the audience and plays a centre wall game with a celebrity where he sends a text to everyone in their phone and sees what humorous responses they get. They have an unexpected star of the show that's given the chance to sing on a West End stage like they've always wanted to, so they get surprised in order to do that. And it's just harmless fun Saturday night entertainment it's really really funny and I enjoy Michael McIntyre as a comedian so it's nice to have something fun like that on a Saturday night I enjoy that and this was also the month I saw the Bohemian Rhapsody movie as well the Queen film but I've already talked about that in my previous video and I've done a whole post about that and the Queen shop and things suffice to say it's awesome so go and check out my October favorites post for my thoughts on that and my Queen post in the blog as well which I'll put a link to in the description but if you haven't seen the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, I highly recommend you do because it's amazing. And then I also got a new audiobook as well, which I listened to during my trip to Portsmouth. And that was the audiobook of the year 2018. And this is by the No Such Thing as a Fish team, who I mentioned earlier. So as I said before, they do a podcast every week where they talk about the facts they've discovered that week. The audiobook of the year is where they talk about the facts they've discovered during the whole year, you know, relating to news articles and stuff like that. So it's really, really fun and really, really interesting. It's based on the print book they've done, but the audiobook version, not only do they read the book, but they actually treat it like an extended podcast. So they often interject and have a chat and a laugh about things as they go along. So it's basically a nine-hour podcast in that sense. It's really, really good because of that. It just makes it very nice and easy and fun to listen to. So I'm glad they've done it in that way. It really, really works. And yeah, it's just really, really interesting. If you like lots of random facts, then it's definitely the sort of book you enjoy listening to. And this is their second book because they did one last year as well. So they've now done two books, which I've listened to both. And yeah, it's very, very good. I encourage you to listen to it if you like learning new things and having a laugh. And then finally, in terms of my blog, there's a couple of other posts I can mention as well. The first is an exchange of interviews I did with Carol from the Invisible Vision Project. And that's a wonderful blog you should check out because she writes very, very well. And it was a pleasure to exchange interviews with her and be featured on her blog and 
to feature an interview with her on mine in return. So do go and check out Carol's blog and also the post that she did for mine. I'll put the links in the description as per usual. But yeah, thank you to Carol for collaborating. That was really, really kind. And if anybody else wants to exchange interviews, like a few people have done now, like Carol and Amanda and Chelsea and people like that, then do get in touch. I'm happy to do something like that. And then the other post I did was called What Makes Me. And it's about what makes me who I am other than my disability. You know, a lot of people focus on the fact that I've got sight loss, but, you know, it's easy to forget that it's not the most important part of me. It's a part of me, but there's so much more to my identity from the stuff I enjoy doing and the stuff that I enjoy experiencing and the type of person I am in general, you know, the type of things I do and things I wear and eat and all sorts. And there's lots of different facets to my life and my personality. So it's nice to have a post to kind of talk about that. And the What Makes Me tag was created by Jem Turner originally, and I was nominated to do it by Holly from Life of a Blind Girl. So they're both wonderful bloggers, so do go and check them out. Um, thank you to Jem for creating that tag and to Holly for nominating me to do it. It was really interesting to do that post and it was great to get the chance to just kind of summarise the sort of person I am in various different ways. Um, you know, Maybe if you really have learned something new about me that you didn't know before. So I do encourage you to go and check that post out. It was really fun to write. It was something different, so I enjoyed that. And that's it. That's all I have to mention for November. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my various adventures. It was a nice, easy, fun month because there were no major events going on. And now, of course, we're in December. We're talking about Christmas all the time now and the preparations are well underway for that. I've been to a couple of Christmas meals already, one of which I met a fellow blogger at, in fact. So hello to Ellen from See My Way. It was lovely to meet you and do go and check out her blog if you can because it's great. She hasn't updated it for a while but nevertheless it's great reading so do go and check it out. I'll put a link to that below as well. See my way. And yeah I've got a few other Christmas meals coming up as well and a few other plans for December too. So it's going to be a lovely festive fun month I think altogether. I probably won't post another sit down talking video like this before Christmas. Um, you know, I might post one or two videos of the Christmas lights in London like I did last year, but in terms of a sit-down talking video like this, I probably won't do one before Christmas. So let me take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Christmas and a very happy New Year. I hope you have a wonderful time, whatever you're doing over the festive season. And also do spare a thought for those who are perhaps less fortunate because they're in difficult circumstances for whatever reason. You know, a friend of mine is going to be having a bit of a hard Christmas because of things that have gone on recently. So do spare a thought for people who perhaps aren't having quite as wonderful a time as you. You know, if you can give some support or whatever to people in that position, then that'd be lovely. And if you're in a position where you're not going to have a great Christmas yourself, then my condolences to you for whatever reason it may be that you're having struggles at the moment. And I hope you're able to find some support and comfort and whatever it is that you need to try and help you feel a bit better. You know, whether it's be you know, help from a friend or a family member or whether it's from a social group of some sort or from special event that's being put on in your area or something online or even if you're just ringing a special number like the Samaritans whatever it is you need to do do seek out the support because it is out there there are people out there who can help you in some way but apart from that yeah I hope everyone has a lovely Christmas and I will see you for another video my December favorites and you know my Christmas roundup in the new year so yeah a very merry Christmas and a happy new year and I will see you for another video in 2019 bye for now mm -hmm.